Welcome to my channel, Delightful Stories. I'll be happy if you subscribe to my channel and like it. Enjoy watching and don't forget to leave your opinion in the comments about the story. How could he do that? The thoughts raced through Brittany's head. The girl stood outside the restaurant, shifting nervously from foot to foot. She was burning with impatience to look that traitorous bastard in the eye. She'd had an argument with Tom a month ago over nothing. She could no longer remember the reason for the quarrel, but she considered it beneath her dignity to come to confess. So she waited patiently for Tom to come to his senses and make amends. She knew he would come back. It wasn't the first time this had happened. Each time the reconciliation was very stormy, full of love, passion, and tenderness. After a long separation, the feelings of the lovers only grew stronger. He guessed her every wish, big or small, and tried to fulfill it. And she liked it a lot. Brittany was sure that they were made for each other. But time went on, and Tom still didn't come. And just a few days ago, she got a call from her best friend, Anna. Don't worry about it. But I just found this out. I don't even know how to tell you. It was obvious that the person on the other end of the line was clearly choosing words, not knowing how to convey the news more properly. Anna, don't drag it out. What's wrong? Well, anyway, your Tom's getting married. And after a little silence, she added, next week. And can you hear me? Are you all right? How do you know? Brittany was the only one who could speak after a long silence. Yes, it doesn't matter. Through acquaintances. It's a small town, there's not much to hide. And who is he marrying? Brittany could feel her speech becoming harder and harder and harder to understand with each word. A lump rolled up her throat and tears welled up in her eyes. I don't know, Anna answered. But I do know that her name is Kira, but I don't know her personally. They say she's smart and beautiful and rich. Of course, it is difficult to imagine so many virtues in one woman, but it is true. After saying goodbye to her friend, Brittany let her feelings run wild. She cried all night, and the next morning she decided that she would be at the wedding, no matter what it took. Having bought a huge bouquet of white roses on the day of the wedding, Brittany went to the swankiest restaurant in their town. It was here that the celebration was to take place. The girl wanted to personally congratulate Tom and look into his shameless eyes. But to her great regret, the restaurant was only open by invitation, which Brittany could not have, but she wasn't desperate. The newlyweds would be arriving any minute, so she decided to wait for the newlyweds at the front door. She didn't have to wait long. About eight minutes later, three fancy cars drove up to the restaurant, and out of one of them, Tom got out in a gorgeous milk-colored suit, and he helped his fiance out. She blocked their way, said the speech she had prepared carefully, rehearsed all morning, flicked her bouquet at the groom's face, and under the indignant looks of those present, walked away with her head held high. She didn't care what people thought of her. Brittany felt like her life was over. Why live without the person she loved? She wasn't a dumb girl and was well aware that one thousands of women find themselves in a similar life situation. She was far from the first, but she had also experienced betrayal. Everyone is different. Someone easily forgets and the next day looking for a replacement for an old relationship, and some long and painfully dig past in the soul, and cannot calm down. Brittany remembered her mother's words, never keep all the suffering inside. Emotions must be poured out, and then it immediately becomes easier. For a couple of days she cried and drank, then drank and cried again. Then she called Anna and asked her to come over, her friend rushed over right away. When Anna saw Brittany, she couldn't believe her eyes. Her face was puffy, her eyes were red like a vampire's. Her hair was tangled and her huge nose was swollen. Oh my God, what a woman, Anna mumbled too, covering her mouth with her hand. Are you out of your mind? What are you doing to yourself? Come on, get dressed. Let's go get some fresh air, and we'll talk at the same time. 
Brittany obediently got dressed and they went for a walk. She told her friend everything that had happened between her and Tom. And she felt really relieved immediately. After Brittany finished her story, the girl sat on the bench in silence, each thinking about her own thing. Suddenly Anna asked, So why do you suffer? I mean, I didn't understand the question, Brittany. You have to learn to live without it. You get used to the idea that you've turned this page. And now a new story begins. A new life, a new phase. Treat it however you want. Brittany looked intently at her friend and smiled childishly. How about some ice cream? Quietly, she asked. Tom, too, was troubled, especially after the scene at the restaurant when he was in a bad mood. But he tried hard not to show it to the guests, and especially to his wife. He could see in her eyes that she understood who Brittany was, but she didn't show it. And Tom was grateful to her for that. Kira was not to blame for anything. Tom had married her on the fly. And since every woman knows who she lost her head to and forgot to take precautions, Kira was sure it was Tom. He, on the other hand, was not so adamant. They'd only had intimacy once, and it had gone sluggishly. He always thought it was impossible to get knocked up by sex like that. But life shows that there are exceptions. And now he is a husband, and soon he will be a father. For himself, the young man decided that after the birth of the child, he would definitely take a DNA test to be 100% sure of his paternity. Tom felt that Kira loved him and really wanted to marry him. The man he was prominent, tall, with a good athletic figure. His hair and black hair was always neatly styled, and those dimples on his cheeks, they were what drove women crazy. When he smiled his battered teeth smile, it just disarmed the already weak sex. He knew that very well, and without any shadow of shyness, he took advantage of it. It had been several months since the wedding. Tom was working. Kira was at home. She was having a very bad pregnancy. But in spite of that, she gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. Beautiful, and most importantly, long awaited. The whole family took her from the maternity hospital. Her husband, mother, father, and little brother there were a lot of balloons and flowers. There was a real celebration where the audience was all the women in labor, the nursing staff, and the windows of the birthing center. Brittany followed Tom's life and knew that he had a son. She didn't forget him for a minute. No matter how much she turned the pages of her life on Anna's advice, and Tom was always present in her thoughts, all the while she was sleeping, working, eating, but all of this she did mechanically. She could not fall asleep until she remembered their nights in detail. Nor, for that matter, could Tom. He was drawn to Brittany, lying in bed with his wife. He couldn't fulfill his marital duty until he remembered Brittany. But he also understood that there was a huge chasm between them, and it was called family. Kira wasn't as temperamental and desirable as the one she gave him in front of everyone with a bouquet on his face. But it hurt. What he did was pig-headed. Things were quiet and peaceful in Tom and Kira's family, but nothing more. It had been six months since William was born, and the man still decided to take a paternity test. He took his material and the baby and took it to the lab. The result came a month later. As expected, it was negative. Tom's suspicions were confirmed. The man, even though he had assumed such an outcome, was shocked to read the document. After all, it was one thing to suspect and quite another to receive confirmation. And from that moment on, he began to gravitate toward a family relationship that had worn itself out before it had even begun. He didn't know the right thing to do, but he really wanted to get back together with Brittany. After all, he didn't know yet that there were changes in her personal life. At Anna's birthday party, she met a young man. His name was Jacob. They liked each other immediately. That same evening, he volunteered to see her off. He was already outside the house asking for a cup of tea. Brittany wasn't ready for that kind of pressure and decided it was too soon to get too close. She pulled the young man away from her and said dryly, 
Good night. She was very disappointing to the young man, who was not used to being denied anything. The constant thoughts of Brittany were driving Tom to talk to his wife, but it always stopped her from worrying that she might lose her milk. And he knew for a fact that she would be worried about their separation. Tom bided his time, gradually getting used to the child who was becoming more and more unlike him every day. It annoyed the man terribly, especially when his spouse's parents came in doting, saying that William is a copy of Tom. The matter resolved itself. His Majesty Chance helped, as always. Since the birth of her son, Kira had not allowed anyone to come and look at the child to avoid the evil eye. Tom did not understand such, as he called splinters, but also did not change his wife's mind. But suddenly she finally decided to invite all of her friends, deciding that she had put up enough time and the danger of the jinx had passed. Kira's friends brought many gifts, a cake, and sitting over a cup of tea, one of them, apparently determined to please her young father, pronounced to her son, Kier, you're going to be handsome somehow. Tom, because you two are so much alike. We can't be like him. With anger, Tom muttered, I'm not the child's father. There was an oppressive silence in the room. The phrase had slipped from the man's tongue because it had been tormenting him and keeping him busy for a long time. Her friends exchanged a glance, and Kira felt hot and asked them to leave. When the couple was left alone, there was hysteria, calls to her father and mother, their arrival, and an explanation of the relationship. Tom already knew he shouldn't have taken it out of the closet, but it was an accident. Mother-in-law, she reassured her daughter, and her father-in-law came over to Tom and sat down next to him on the couch. Of course, it's hard to evaluate what you did, he sighed heavily. Your guess is your own business, of course. But why are you embarrassing Kira in front of everyone? It's despicable. That's no way to behave. You ought to have consulted me before you went round shouting things you weren't sure of. Something you're not sure of. Okay, I'm sure. Flashed. Tom brought the DNA test. So, Kira's father was surprised. I'm supposed to believe some piece of paper. This is not a piece of paper but a document from the lab that confirms that I am not the father of this child. Who? And this you should check with your daughter. She is the only one who knows this fact. They both looked at Kira, but it was immediately clear to them that they would not hear the truth any time soon. The young woman was wildly hysterical, and it was better not to touch her now, especially with a question like that. So it was decided to leave her alone so that she could at least come to her senses a little. After a while, Kira asked her parents to leave so she could talk to her husband alone. When the door closed behind them, she said, Why? Why did you do this test? Are you unhappy with me? Don't you like me one little bit? Look, Kira, I didn't do it because I don't like you, but because I wasn't sure that you could get knocked up once. I doubted it from the beginning. I just didn't know how to tell you. Then I saw that my son didn't look like me. I went through my childhood photos and made sure my doubts weren't unfounded. Well, after all, I have a right to know the truth. Do you even know who the father of the baby is? Kira looked intently at her husband with tearful eyes. I know, she nodded, shook her lips guiltily and then added, but I never loved him. I fell in love with you as soon as I saw you. I didn't want to deceive you. I really believed you were the father. Or rather, I wanted to believe you were the father. Or rather, I wanted to believe it. But you won't leave us. She grabbed Tom's hand and pressed it. To her tear, wet cheek. I love you so much. Please don't leave us. Tom released her hand and stood up, whispering, I'm not promising you anything. In his mind... He was already free. He was with Brittany. He missed her so much. He was drawn to her like a magnet. And Brittany was doing great on the personal front. Jacob had been courting her. And he sincerely thought the courtship had gone on long enough. But the girl wouldn't let him anywhere near her. Each time she found a new reason. If someone had asked her if she liked Jacob, she would have answered without a moment's hesitation. Yes. But if she started comparing suitors to Tom, 
Jacob was losing out considerably. Brittany missed Tom and remembered him constantly. She made a promise to herself that if Jacob could endure a month of courtship, she would agree to be intimate with him. And recently, the same Anna had given her the shocking news. Tom is not the birth father of the baby. This is a chance. Immediately flashed through the girl's mind. After all, things could be different now. And Tom could come back to her. Brittany immediately decided to call him. Hello, my love. She said into the tube, putting all the tenderness into the intonation. And she heard the educated voice on the other end of the line. Hello, my love. I am so glad you called. I am so happy to hear your voice. I miss you. So come. I haven't forgotten the address. I'm always waiting for you. An hour later, he is on her doorstep. Her heart is pounding furiously in her chest, as if it wants to burst out. Brittany's eyes glisten with tears. He's finally in front of her, the man she's been longing to see. She wanted to hang onto his neck and never let him go. From that moment on, life took on new colors. Everything changed. The sun shone brighter. The grass was much stronger than before. Tom promised to get a divorce soon and return to Brittany. Often, he didn't come home at night. Kira cried at night, but there was nothing she could do to change it. One morning when she returned home, Tom found her father-in-law at home. Where have you been? In a disgruntled tone, asked the man. I am not your subordinate, Tom answered in a firm tone. I'm not going to report to you. If I want to tell you where I've been, I'll only tell my wife. What about you, my love? Tom turned to Kira. She was in her thirties, and she'd better learn how to handle family matters on her own instead of calling her mom and dad at the drop of a hat. Don't you dare bring up my daughter. The father got angry. She's not like you. She sleeps at home. Takes care of the baby, and she's the kind of wife you'd expect, isn't she? You should have been brought up earlier, Tom interrupted his father to be more choosy about his sexual relations. He turned around and headed for the exit. Tom, stay. He heard his wife's belittling voice, but he was already shaking from her voice in personal tears. He was on his way to Brittany, the one who was his ray of light in this dark realm of tears, reproaches, and lies. As he drove the car, his phone was bursting with calls from his wife. But the man didn't want to hear how much she loved him and couldn't live without him. He was in a hurry to his beloved and his new life with her. But where the hell was he? She was angry. She'd been waiting for Tom all night. She turned Jacob down, citing a headache. That's it, I'm done. I'll kick him out tomorrow. But Tom didn't come. Not tomorrow, not the day after. He didn't show up at all. Brittany thought he'd picked a wife and kid. To hell with you, she told herself once again. She wouldn't refuse Jacob any more appointments. And since the month she'd been testing him was coming to an end, Brittany decided to finally take the young man out to dinner and then have breakfast together. Waking up in the morning in Jacob's arms, she mentally found an excuse to herself. It was to spite you, Tom. He's as good as you are. And you live with your Kira and raise someone else's child. Having said all that, as if to herself in her mind... She calmed down and fell back into sleep in the arms of her new lover. The day after the scandal, Kira received a call from the city hospital, informing her that Tom had had an accident in the hospital. Leaving the child with her parents, she rushed to her husband at the hospital to find a doctor. In a trembling voice, she asked, Doctor, how is he? Is he all right? His condition is serious, the doctor replied. Your husband is in a coma. There's a huge hematoma on his head, and we need your consent to an operation to remove it. And there's also a concern about his leg. And there's also a concern about his leg. It was trapped in the door during the accident. If the therapy doesn't work, unfortunately, we will have to amputate it. I'm very sorry. The doctor tried to find the right words to reassure the woman, seeing the horror, the panic in her eyes. 
I understand that the man is young and has his whole life ahead of him, so we'll try to do everything we can to save the leg. Amputation is a last resort, but you have to be prepared for anything. Kara gave permission for the surgery, put Tom in a private room, and began to care for her husband around the clock. The operation to remove the hematoma was successful, but it was necessary to wait for the crisis to pass. To Mom's face was a wreck. It was all shattered, his nose broken, his lower lip cut off. The lower lip was cut off. The leg was saved by all available means, but the treatment was very hard. Vessels were severely pinched and the toes began to turn black. It started to go into gangrene and the vascular checkup showed that I had to amputate the leg up to my knee. Above that, the vessels were working. Again, Kira's permission was needed. The woman didn't know what to do. Was it more important to you to have a husband or his leg? The attending physician asked sternly, Of course the husband, Kira exclaimed. Well, I'm telling you, as a long-time doctor, you can't save his leg. Look at the black toes. That's dead tissue, and if we pull on the husband, you will lose him. The doctor looked intently at the woman and held out a pen to her. She signed the amputation consent with a trembling hand. A short time later, he was taken away for an emergency operation. Three hours later, he was brought back without his leg. Kira was hysterical. She could not calm down and believe that she alone was to blame. The woman couldn't imagine what she would say to Tom when he came to and found out he was missing one leg. If you behave like this, I will have to remove you from the hospital. Your husband needs support, not your tantrums. What's all the rawness you're making here? A month later, Tom came out of his coma. When he found out his leg had been amputated to the knee, he started smashing everything around him that he could reach. The nurses came running in and sedated him. The man fell asleep. This went on several times until a doctor came to the room. This time, threats pleaded with the patient. Tom, aren't you the only person with this problem? Yes, missing a leg is not easy. I understand you, but it's not the end of life either. There are people who have had both legs amputated, not to their knees, but much higher. And look at these people, they're fretting, they're ending their lives. No, they adapt to the new reality and go on living. They play sports, they raise children. Life doesn't end there. And in your case, the limbs are not just up to the knee. Now they make such prosthetic limbs. You can't tell them from a real leg. This is the 21st century. Be a man and don't tell. You must be an example to your son. After this conversation, Tom for three days did not eat anything, did not eat anything, did not talk with anyone, just lay there with his eyes closed and thought about the situation. On the fourth day, the doctor came again. Tom, if you don't fight for your life, you will lose it. Is that what you want? When a person has no desire to live, all the strength is gone. The body stops working and resisting, and the person dies. Tom nodded and opened his eyes and looked intently at the doctor. That's right, doctor. I don't want to live. I don't want to be a burden on somebody. I don't want to be a burden on my wife and sit on her neck for the rest of my life. I'd rather this life be over now. That's right, the doctor deduced. All your thoughts are absolutely correct except the last one. If you don't want to be a burden, You'll just have to go back to work. What's the tragedy? What's the tragedy? What's stopping you from doing it? As soon as the prosthesis is ready, Tom, you'll be a complete person and you won't be a burden to anyone. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You'll have another baby. Just don't give up. The doctor walked out and Tom wondered. There was some truth in what the man in the white coat had said. Brittany only learned of Tom's tragedy when she returned from her trip. Jacob had invited her to vacation in Italy. There he proposed and she gave her consent. And upon her arrival, Anna called her on the first day and told her everything in detail. Why didn't you tell me before? Brittany was indignant. I didn't want to ruin the mood on vacation. Brittany's friend excused herself. You wouldn't have come back before time anyway. There was something reasonable in Anna's words. 
and Brittany didn't argue. The room where her beloved was not allowed to her, but to the attending doctor she nevertheless broke through and asked her not to hide anything from her and tell him about to hide anything from her and tell him about Tom's health. Everything as it was. The doctor refused at first, but Brittany cried so much that the man relented. When she found out that Tom now had no leg, the girl was in shock. What do you mean, no leg at all? What's an invalid now? Brittany couldn't imagine the handsome Tom. One-legged. She tried to pull herself together, thanked the doctor, and left the office. On the way out, she took out her cell phone and dialed Anna. Can you believe it, my friend? Tom got his leg cut off? Yeah, he's a colleague now. And I'm sorry, she went on listening. But you know what I thought? Thank God I didn't decide on Jacob. May I have a healthy and rich husband? Well, what about Tom? He has a wife. Let her take care of him. He has a wife. Let her take care of him. He's made his choice. I've got a wedding to prepare for. By the way, you know, you and I are supposed to be at the bridal shop in two hours. So we'll meet up. The wedding took place three weeks later. Everything was expensive and rich. Immediately after the celebration, the newlyweds flew to Cyprus on their honeymoon and upon their arrival. Brittany moved into her husband's apartment and decided to rent hers. Tom was slowly coming to his senses. His parents often visited him, supported him as much as they could, and promised to help him with the purchase of a prosthesis. The sum was not insignificant, but the problem was solved quite easily. The person responsible for the accident was found. An investigation was underway. Tom testified, backed up by CTV footage. It turned out that the perpetrator of the accident that night was drunk. Somehow, the door of the room swung open and a man entered the room. Tom and Kira recognized him. He was the same man who had crashed into Tom. He silently put a chair close to the bed, sat down, and looked intently at the patient. How are you? Just asked the unexpected guest. It's okay. The only thing Tom could answer was a dazed tone. What am I doing here? My name is John, by the way. Let's meet. Well, I'm willing to pay for everything. Whatever you say. Just don't write me up. We'll make it up to you. Treatment in Germany and a prosthesis. Tom was not confused. No problem. There's money, John smiled. Indeed, the man paid for absolutely all the expenses. They ordered the best prosthesis. Although the amount was a lot of money... John paid every penny, no questions asked, and thought he got off very easy. Tom came back from Germany and already had his prosthesis, and, indeed, it was comfortable, lightweight, and the man did not consider himself an invalid at all. The doctor was absolutely right. Life was just beginning. The mood was great, and within a week, Tom was able to go to work. He really wanted to call Brittany to share his joy with her, for surely his beloved could not find his place from worry. Good thing she hadn't seen him in such a terrible state and didn't know anything. Tom dialed the number and listened for a long time to the beeps. Suddenly something clicked on the other end of the line, and he heard a man's voice. Hello. Tom was confused and didn't know how to react. He looked at the phone screen and made sure the number was dialed correctly. Hello, they repeated on the phone. Who is this, Brittany? Yes, all Tom could say was, I'm her husband. She's busy right now. Call back later. And there was a short ringing tone on the phone. What husband? Brittany got married. Tom couldn't find his place at work. Nothing was working. His mind was scattered. And he couldn't concentrate. So he decided to go home. Things were stressful at home too. A wife he didn't love. A child he didn't know. He went out on the balcony and smoked one cigarette after another. Reflecting on life, he wondered how his life would have turned out if he hadn't been in that unfortunate accident. After all, it was what Tom thought had ruined his life. We've got to go, Tom said to himself. I can't go on like this. I'm going back to my apartment. There's no life here anyway. The morning before he left for work, he informed Kira of his decision that he wanted to live separately in his apartment so she wouldn't have to worry. He needs to gather his thoughts, and then they will decide how to proceed. 
Just remember that I love you very much, Kira hugged him. And I'm always waiting, Tom nodded and went out. He was glad to be back in his bachelor pad. Everything here was familiar, the memories and the setting. I, ah, the man sighed, with his chest full. He opened the windows to ventilate, put on the kettle and made himself some sandwiches. Now he felt like a happy man. After dinner, Tom sat down at his laptop and found Brittany on social media. He caught himself thinking that that passion for her was gone. Looking at a picture of Brittany, her spouse, he concluded that they were a beautiful couple. He could see that Brittany was happy around him. Tom calmly reviewed all the pictures and came to the conclusion that there was no jealousy and no resentment either. He was well aware that in his current position, he couldn't give Brittany as much as her husband could. That page had to be closed and he had to move on with his life. The next day, he called Alice. The woman who used to come every week to clean up his house and asked her to resume her duties, Alice happily agreed. Upon arriving from work, Tom did not recognize his den. It was cozy, clean, and smelled like pies. Lined and lined curtains fluttered in the wind from the open balcony. And there was such a soul-crushing feeling about it. Tom remembered his mother, under whom the house was always cozy and orderly. Alice was gone, and there was a note on the table. The house is in order. The pie is in the oven. I'll come back next Monday. You'll need me before then. Call me Alice. Tom smiled and set the table for dinner. The pie came in handy. There was no need to cook anything. But just as he decided to enjoy the second piece, the apartment, the phone rang. It was Kira. Tom sighed heavily and caught himself thinking that he hadn't remembered or even missed her one bit these days. After waiting a little while, he picked up the phone. Hi, Kira. How are you doing? How's William? What happened? No, we're fine. I just wanted to see how you were settling in. I missed you. There was nothing to answer him. The conversation didn't last. Both had nothing to say, so... After being silent for another 20 seconds, Tom promised to stop by and visit them one day. After hanging up, he stared at the phone for a long time. Somewhere deep down in his heart, he felt pity for Kira but he could not build a relationship on pity and he would never be able to love her. This moment had to be lived through. Time passed. Tom worked hard because that was how he could forget himself. Helped out with a spoon. Finally, he bought himself a car and now he could often go out with friends and often took his ex-wife with him. William was already walking a lot, flying around without a word. And he was a very funny toddler. One day, Tom took him in his arms and realized that the boy had grown considerably and put on weight. William laughed and called him Daddy. Tom was pleased to hear that, but at the same moment he was afraid that he might become attached to the child to love someone else's baby. It didn't seem right to him. A child should have its own father, but there was happiness on Kira's face. Two beloved men beside each other, and nothing else was needed. William was often taken away by Kira's parents, and in such moments of loneliness, she had plenty of time to reflect, critically examining herself in the mirror. She came to the conclusion that her figure wasn't bad enough. It didn't sprawl wider. After the birth of her son, the woman was quite attractive, and that meant she had every chance of happiness. She just had to wait. And since she only wanted one man, and she had the patience of an angel. She was sure she would get her way. Brittany was over the moon. She was fully provided for. Her husband urged her to quit her job and finally think about having children. How long can we drag this out? The family must be complete, and he genuinely didn't understand what else they were missing for that purpose. But I don't want to quit, Brittany pouted playfully at her husband's repeated requests. But why? Jacob wondered sincerely. What do you miss, living off the shelf? Nothing to do. A house full of servants. What? 
What else do I have to do for you to have my son? Once again, Brittany shrugged and answered, Well, it's not time yet. Let's wait, and I'll give you two babies right away. I don't care if it's three. Jacob often sent his wife on vacations to warmer climes. He made up for her lack of attention. Work took a lot of time, but Brittany was not capricious. On the contrary, always gladly accepted these gifts. She had her own interest in them. On every trip she started, a stormy resort romance, as they say to the point of trembling in the knees. Such an affair was long enough for her. But as soon as memories began to fade from memory, she hinted at her husband for another trip. She packed her bags and left again to meet adventures. And so on the next trip, she met him by his appearance and arrogant demeanor. He was at least a chic, extremely good-looking, knew his price perfectly. Looked down on everyone. He's two meter tall. Of course, Brittany could not resist him. And in every imaginable and unimaginable way, she tried to get his attention. But all her attempts were in vain. The vacation was coming to an end, and there were fewer and fewer attempts to get his attention. This distressed the woman enormously. Finally, she calmed down and decided to rest her days at her own pleasure. As soon as she stopped fussing, a real miracle happened. He himself sat down to her on the beach, and in perfect Russian, he asked, Let's get acquainted. With a look, but she turned away without answering, continuing to sunbathe. She should have kept her mark. Let him chase after her now. My name is John. And you, Brittany, I know all about you. Why so much attention to my person? With the same indifferent voice, Brittany asked. Well, it's just that I've liked you for a long time. Brittany couldn't help her sarcastic tone. Well, as soon as you saw you, what's the problem? Brittany looked at her interlocutor and saw that he was smirking unceremoniously and defiantly with indignation. She immediately sat down on the recliner and asked, So what kept you from meeting me ten days ago? Your desire to jump out of your bathing suit is too great. John smiled again. You, how dirty. The woman was embarrassed, and for a moment became ashamed that her desire to get to know each other was so obvious to him. And when did you become calm and kind of indifferent? It was time for introductions. Brittany smiled. Regardless, she was excited to get to know each other. The entire sorority envied her and stared after her. And she got her revenge. Their romance was so booming that the same evening he invited her to his room. And she could not refuse. All her expectations were met. John was a wonderful lover young and assertive. The rest of the vacation flew by unnoticed and it was time to go home. Soon she was home. Jacob was at work as usual and Brittany took a shower and fell asleep as a baby. She dreamed of warm places, beautiful men and the sea, which whispered that she missed her already. The meeting with her husband was warm. He told her how much he missed her. That next time they would definitely go together. In the evening, they went to a restaurant and danced a lot. She knew he loved her. For a second, she thought he had become more reserved toward her. Colder, as it were. But Brittany didn't think much of it, putting it down to her husband's fatigue. After all, Jacob had been working hard, and that couldn't help but affect his behavior. In general, everything was as usual. The next day, something happened that Brittany had never expected. John called her. I want to see you. I missed you. Heard Brittany on the phone. You're crazy. The woman laughed. There are a thousand kilometers between us. I'm in the city. He answered and had already rented an apartment. A friend promised to help with the job. So everything is going more than well. Write down the address and come. I'll be right there. Brittany's car whistled out the gates of the mansion and raced down the deserted road toward new adventures. She loved to drive fast and was an excellent driver. Brittany always told her husband that she relaxed behind the wheel. 
That's when Jacob called and said he was going to be late at work. Another business meeting that couldn't be rescheduled. But Brittany only smiled and caught herself thinking that everything was working out well. She replied that she would go to her friend's house and drop off the presents she had brought from her vacation. For a second, she remembered Tom, and in the back of her mind, she was glad that this was how their life had turned out. If he hadn't been in an accident then, how her life would be now. Everything would probably be quiet and peaceful, family-like and middle-class. Not like it is now. Tom did have a quieter life after the accident. He'd grown cold to the adventures, even though they'd rocked in their day. It was a hell of a time. Now he was thinking more about family values. In his thirties, he wanted more clarity and stability in the family. And to live without love and for the sake of pity, he did not want. There is only one life, and you have to live it in such a way that you feel happy. But to start a new life, he had to put the old one behind him. And he was determined to talk to Kira about the divorce. He understood that it would be difficult, that Kira was a good person, but that was no reason to tie his life to her. She deserved better and she was bound to meet a good man who would appreciate her. Yes, that is exactly what he will tell her when he meets her. Kira, contrary to expectations, took all the information calmly and agreed with all the arguments. She would very much like to have Tom back, but at the same time, she was not a silly, capricious girl. Kira understood perfectly well that Tom had to be let go. He wanted to go, let him go. So they have different paths. It happens. And that's okay, that's life, she told herself repeatedly. During the time that they lived apart, the couple parted in a civilized way. Tom's new life began with the renovation of the apartment, which stretched for more and more than six months. The man did not think it would ever end. And here again, Alice came to the rescue. The woman put everything in order, made the apartment comfortable, and turned it into a little nest from which he did not want to go anywhere. Tom still helped Kira and William. But one day his ex-wife called him herself and told him that they didn't need his help anymore. She was getting married and William would be adopted. Tom was glad that things had worked out that way. He mentally wished Kira happiness and he sighed in relief. Now that page had been completely turned. Brittany rushed to John's house at full speed. She didn't wait for the elevator, but raced to the fifth floor. Candles were lit. A table had been laid, and a basket of flowers was beside it. Such a beautiful basket. No one had ever given it to her before. The bouquet was fabulous, and consisted of 28 beautiful roses. Why 28? Brittany asked, breathing in the scent of flowers. On the 28th, you and I met, John smiled. The two of them were having a good time together. The time was already 11 o'clock at night when Jacob called. Are you still at Anna's? He asked in a tired voice. I'm on my way to the car now, Brittany said. I'll be home soon. We have to go. Brittany turned to John, hanging up the phone. Is he hitting you? John wondered. Really? The woman laughed. He worships me. He carries me in his arms. Immediately, not a second more. She got dressed and went down to the car, pulling up to the gates of the mansion. Brittany thought, it would be nice if Jacob was already asleep. And as she entered the house, she sighed in relief. Her husband, indeed, was asleep. He couldn't wait for her. Brittany wasn't troubled at all by her conscience. Even her spouse's good attitude and secure life could not make her respect family values. She couldn't have it any other way. With one man, she was just bored. As her husband left for work in the morning, she did not hear him. The woman slept soundly, and as soon as she opened her eyes, she immediately dialed John. She wanted to come to him right away, but he was no longer at home, but on his way to a job interview. Let's do it tonight, he said. Well, Brittany pouted, it's harder tonight. Jacob's home. Leave Jacob and come with me. 
John suggested in a serious tone. Are you out of your mind? I don't work. I live for my own pleasure. He provides for me completely. My every wish is the law. No, no, darling. That's not an option for me. But I don't want to share you with anyone, John insisted. If that's not good enough for you, Brittany said slyly, then we'd better break up. All right, so be it, John said dryly. Goodbye. And he hung up. Dumbfounded, Brittany looked at the phone and muttered, What was that all about? Has he gone completely insane? Who does that man think he is, Len? We'll see. She paced nervously around the room and stopped by the mirror, meticulously examining her chick figure. He would regret those words. He would regret those words. He would come crawling back himself. But days went by, and no one came crawling in. And that, Brittany declared, was already regretting her own words. She was miserable without this man. She was bored and took all her anger out on her husband. What's the matter with you? Jacob couldn't stand it one day. You're always yelling at me. What's wrong? What have I done wrong? I come home from work hoping to see a gentle, affectionate wife at home, and I'm greeted every day by Kerberos. Why don't you get a job? It seems to me that you have it from idleness. The man tapped his hand on the desk and disappeared behind the office door. Brittany was quick to react. She didn't want to lose Jacob, too. He hadn't come to the bedroom that night, either. In the morning, Brittany got up early and made breakfast. She wanted to kiss her husband at breakfast, but he evaded her tenderness. So she thought. Things were very bad. She had to fix it right away. For a while, Brittany even forgot about John for a while. Her husband was much more important now. It turned out that she did not know him well, and he had a temper too. And she, as an experienced woman, should have foreseen this, so as not to let the situation get out of hand. All week, like Alice, she walked around her husband, anticipating his slightest desires. And finally, the fortress fell. He returned to the bedroom, and the conflict was over. I love you very much, Brittany whispered to her husband. Please forgive me. The atmosphere in the house went back to the way it was before, and now it was time to remember his lover. He still wasn't picking up the phone, so she decided to go to his apartment. She didn't have the keys, and no one would answer the intercom. She had to leave with nothing, but she wasn't about to give up. Brittany decided to go shopping. In the evening, she drove over to John's house again. The door was still unlocked, so she went into the driveway with the woman. No one, Brittany answered, and ran down the stairs. Her heart was pounding so hard it felt like it was going to burst out of her chest. Tears welled up in her eyes. When she got home, she calmed down, cleaned herself up, and told Jacob that she was very tired and wanted to go to the sea. He didn't. Object though he was a little surprised. But his wife's wish was legitimate to him and the tickets were bought for the next day. This time Brittany flew to Bali. She wanted to be in paradise on earth. As always, she was not deprived of men's attention, but this time the woman could not even look at men. A week did not seem long enough for her to come to her senses. So she called her husband and stayed for another week. But unfortunately, that didn't help either and she returned home in a worse mood than before departure. But having learned from bitter experience, she no longer hid her anger at her husband. Over the years of her marriage, she had become very dependent on Jacob. He took care of all her worries, big or small, and it remained only to enjoy life. He always came to the rescue and made always quick right decisions. Sometimes she wondered if something happened to him what would she do then? How would she live? Would she be able to run his firm? Keep the house to herself, God forbid children. She was already so used to her little rich world that she didn't even want to work half the day. She was happy, but Brittany found someone to take her anger out on. The servants were now getting the worst of it. Brittany yelled at them, 
threatened to fire them for any little thing. John never called. And she called again and again. To him, and she stomped on what was left of her own pride. And then a miracle happened. He answered the phone. I'm listening. Brittany was surprised and couldn't figure out what to say. Why didn't you say anything? Did you swallow your tongue? And didn't swallow anything. Brittany finally came to her senses. You're the worst kind of bastard, aren't you? How could you do that to the woman you love? But this same woman decided everything for both of us. To me, a woman's wish is law. Brittany clearly imagined him smirking a smile. Ah, that's right. Brittany decided to change her anger for mercy in time. I mean, the woman wants to see you tonight. She really misses you. How do you feel about that? No, John answered. I'm working late tonight. It's a rush job. Then when? I'll call you when I'm free, the man answered and hung up. Of course, it wasn't what Brittany was expecting, but it was better than not knowing. She called Anna, and I invited her over. John called two days later. It was a day off. Leaving the house was difficult, but nothing could stop Brittany. Either. She quickly came up with a cover story. The meeting was hot. Life was slowly getting better with both her husband and John. Everything was going great, until one thing happened. Jacob was going on a little vacation and wanted to see his parents. As soon as Brittany heard this, she rolled. Her eyes asked in a low voice. For how long? Brittany was not friends with her mother-in-law. I saw her once when I took her to meet her parents. Veronica was a wise and outspoken woman. She told Jacob right away what she thought of his chosen one. She thought her girl was windy, lovable, capable of hurting her only and beloved son. She promised that as long as Brittany loved Jacob, she was willing to put up with her too. That was the end of the acquaintance. But Brittany always felt that her mother-in-law was watching her, as if she was waiting for some mistake that would prove her right. So Brittany had to think hard before she did anything unpleasant to her husband. After all, she needed marriage like air. Brittany was upset. She really didn't want to go to her mother, in-law's house and pretend to be a devoted, loving wife. Boring. Suddenly, John called. I bought tickets to a warm country. We're going on an unforgettable vacation. It'll be fun to pack our bags. His call was like a volcano. Brittany was rapidly trying to figure out what to do. She didn't want to give up her trip with John, but she couldn't send her husband alone. I can't go with you. Are you offended? She whispered into the phone. Why? John wondered. I can't go now. Jacob has tickets to see his parents, and I have to go with him. Let's reschedule. Wait ten days and I'm yours. I'm begging you. In ten days my vacation will be over, John said in a no longer cheerful voice. Think of something. I can't. This is not the case. You don't understand. Tears of resentment and hopelessness streamed down Brittany's cheeks. Well, what do you think? Then I'll rest on my own. Believe me, I'll find something to do. He hung up and Brittany collapsed on the bed and let her feelings flow. Tom had been trying to make a life for himself all this time, too. But, as it turned out, it wasn't easy. One of the girls had even called him a nerd and told him that he should take life easier, and then life would be easier. He wanted to explain to her why he didn't quite agree with her and she had already jumped out of the cafe. He waved goodbye. After the accident, he reconsidered a lot of things in his life. He was even ashamed of some of the things he had done for the first time in his life. He was drawn to church. When he went into the church, he had a long talk with his priest, and then he felt really relieved. He even seemed to be feeling better. Things got better. And one day before Christmas, he met her. They met by chance at the entrance to the supermarket. Although his priest had warned him there were no such things as chance encounters. God sends the right person. That must have been it. Her bag broke, and all the fruit, tangerines, and apples were bouncing down the steps. 
Tom was about to get in the car when he saw it all. The girl was so confused. She stood and watched her purchases scatter in different directions. Tom came over and offered to help. She nodded, and the two of them began to pick up the shopping together. He gave her a ride home, and on the way he learned that his companion's name was Victoria. Can I call you? Tom asked, just as she was about to slam the car door. Of course, Victoria smiled and dictated her number. They called each other every day. They found common interests. Finally, Tom worked up the courage to ask Victoria out on a date. Luckily for him, she agreed. Victoria was a little older than Tam, but the man was not embarrassed in the least. They walked along the waterfront telling each other stories from their college life. They were happy together. So three months had passed, but in that time, they had already managed to declare their feelings for each other and were sure that they would be happy. Vika had a lot to offer her beloved. Man, a sense of humor, an attractive appearance, the ability to cook, and most importantly, to be a devoted, faithful wife and sincerely love her man. All the questions that might have arisen after marriage. They resolved on shore. He told her what had happened to him. She about her marriage, and there were no secrets between them. There was no wedding as such. They got married quietly, without too much fuss. They invited their closest friends to a restaurant and had a wonderful celebration of the main event in their lives. That was how Tom's married life began, but it was nothing like the previous one. Now he was happy. Victoria was loved, desired, and adored her husband. And soon Victoria announced to her husband, and soon Victoria announced to her husband that she was pregnant and they would soon become parents. There was no limit to their happiness. Tom realized that they were on the verge of something new, amazing, and their life would never be the same now. And it thrilled him, but when Victoria announced that she would give birth to twins, it was a real shock for the man. Let it be positive, but still stressful. Now he fully felt what a shock. Soon a boy, Max, and a girl, Milana, were born. Alice, as always, was there and came to the young mother to help with the unwanted babies. It was her pleasure. The young father was over the moon. God gave him that happiness. The trials that came upon him. It was hard, but he came out victorious and thanked God for his happiness. For Brittany, events unfolded less beautifully. At her mother-in-law's Things were decent, breakfasts, lunches, and dinners with the family. Around a huge table, there was talk about the future, reminiscing and talking again. Brittany promised her mother-in-law that she would definitely consider making them happy with the news of grandchildren soon. Brittany called John, but he didn't pick up. Upon returning home, she dialed her lover's number again. He answered but said he had another day off and didn't want to waste it talking to her. How would he be free? He'll dial her. Brittany didn't take offense. She knew she was at fault. It was because of her that he was spending his vacation alone. She really wanted to believe that. A full week had passed since his return when he finally called Brittany and invited her to his place. The young woman rushed to him on the wings of love when, after a pleasant time, John went to take a shower. She heard the phone ring. It was the phone to John. The sound was coming from the nightstand, and the woman couldn't resist looking to see who needed her lover at this late hour. The warden's name popped up on the cell phone screen. Brittany even got a little upset for some reason and smiled to herself, but suddenly her attention was drawn to the papers on which the cell phone was lying. It was the results of the tests. As she studied it, the smile slowly slid off her face and her hair stood on end. John had Eve. Could it be that he, knowing his diagnosis, had deliberately infected her? She couldn't believe it. Or rather, she didn't want to. When he came out of the bathroom and saw Brittany with the documents in his hands, he just smirked and said, And you found it. Well, it's easier that way. Now you know everything. How could you? Brittany whispered. Her tongue could barely move in shock. A lump came to her throat. She was desperately short of breath. What did you want? John justified himself. 
He looked at Brittany with a surprised look full of hatred. It was your fault. If you had chosen me instead of your husband, I would be healthy now. It was from loneliness. I was looking for fun on the side and got mixed up with that scum. Then we both have to pay for it. Why should I suffer for the rest of my life and go on living my life for my own pleasure? Brittany couldn't believe her ears. She had loved him so much, and he had turned out to be nothing. She was instantly born, gave John a slap in the face, and left, slamming the door loudly. Brittany didn't go home, she called. Anna, who had asked to sleep over. Brittany didn't know what to do. Sleeping with her husband scared her. But if she slept separately, it would be very strange. There had to be a good reason, and importantly, a believable one. Brittany was driving in the car, tears streaming down her cheeks. The last time she had cried like this as a child was when her mother died. Anna had no more, nothing to hide, and told her everything that had happened to her. Once she got to the scariest part, she noticed that Anna moved away from her. What are you doing? Brittany was surprised. Are you afraid of getting it? It's not airborne. Don't worry about it. And no offense, but you can't be too careful. What should I do? You'd better advise me. Yes, you've done a lot of damage. It's not an easy situation. Listen, I'm going to call my mom. She has a doctor next door. Tell her when she can get it checked out later. Anna's mother called back and said that not before a month, maybe even three. My God, what am I going to tell Jacob? Brittany cried. Listen, Anna suddenly exclaimed. Maybe you could get some money from the doctors and go to the clinic for a month. Jacob would come and visit you, and you could have tests in a month. And if a month is not enough and you have to wait. I read Brittany. Well, let's solve problems as they come up, Anna concluded. The next day, Brittany went to her gynecologist. She honestly told her everything and asked for help. It took a long time to negotiate with the clinic. It was not as easy as Anna thought it would be, but it worked out. She called Jacob from the hospital and told him where she was. She only told him what she could tell him. She asked him to bring her things and fruit. Two hours later, he was already in the hospital. You don't come every day? Brittany asked. I'll call you. Get some rest. I'll be fine. The husband nodded. Just call to keep me informed. Brittany was assigned to a private room for a fee, and the woman now had plenty of time to think about her life. A month later, Brittany had a test, and it was negative, but the doctor said that it was too little time, and to be sure it was necessary to be tested again in a month. With great difficulty, Brittany was persuaded to keep her for a second month, not for free, of course. Jacob was visibly nervous. He didn't know what was going on with his wife. He talked to the head of the department, but she was aware of the situation and was able to reassure her husband. A month later, the test was negative again, and Brittany's happiness was overwhelming. She asked to leave the hospital the same day, and without telling Jacob, she decided to go home to surprise him. During this time, she thought about a lot of things, decided to settle down. She realized how much she cared about Jacob. She couldn't lose him. Upon returning home, Brittany decided to give her husband a child or not, better two or three. She decided to be truly happy because she had everything for that. The woman was flying home. After all, she now had a new life, as if she had been given a second chance and she did not want to lose it. Entering the mansion, she headed for the study. Jacob mostly spent his free time there, and the car in the yard told her that he was home. Brittany tiptoed toward the study. What are you? Footsteps don't ruin a surprise. The study door was open, and voices could be heard from there. Her husband was not alone. She decided to wait and not distract her husband from his courageous conversation and involuntarily listen. Suddenly hearing her companion's voice sent a chill down Brittany's spine. This couldn't be right. She couldn't be mistaken. The woman stepped closer and now she was sure. Jacob was talking to John. She even stopped breathing, lest she accidentally find herself. I don't know when she'll be released, 
She's been in that clinic for two months now, Jacob said. I don't know how much longer she's going to keep up the comedy. Well, maybe this will teach her a lesson for the future. John's voice came out. She would be more discerning in the future. Brittany didn't understand and decided to find out here and now. She puffed her chest and stepped into the office. Jacob's face showed surprise. He hadn't expected her to show up. John, on the other hand, grinned as usual. What's going on here? She asked loudly. Well, I've got to go. With a generational slap, John stood up and walked away at a brisk pace. Despite Brittany's objections, the woman looked intently at her spouse. What does it all mean? She repeated her question. Jacob took a deep breath and gestured for her to sit in the chair where her former lover had been sitting a minute earlier. She didn't refuse and complied with her husband's request. It's simple, Jacob began. John, my friend, I couldn't understand your behavior. I didn't know if you loved me or not. Our relationship was strange, to say the least. You didn't want to have a baby. I was happy to travel alone. I didn't want to think you were taking advantage of me, but it was obvious. John and I met completely by chance in a coffee shop. He was on business in our town and offered to have coffee. As we were talking, I shared with him what I was going through. There was no one else to talk to, and he was willing to listen. And so he suggested that we just check to see if you'd be bitten by his advances or not. That's how he showed up at the resort. And how do you remember? You couldn't resist. I felt really bad at the time. And then I had a revenge plan. I wanted to teach you a lesson once and for all. So after you came back, I called John and arranged for the play to continue. He agreed. And I was the one who got the job. I was the friend of your lover. And then you know the rest. Naturally, the test results you found were bogus. You were in the clinic for two months for nothing. Jacob grinned sadly. It's cruel, whispered Brittany, who had sat still the whole time, horrified to realize what a terrible story she had gotten herself into through the fault of her own recklessness. No argument. Jacob looked at his wife with an attentive but cruel gaze. And being such a scary bitch and a traitor isn't cruel. What were you missing? I loved you, really. I loved you sincerely and all. Consuming, I was ready to give you the whole world and ask for nothing but love and respect in return. It's complicated. Now remember how you responded to me. So which one of us is tough? Brittany didn't know what to answer. He was right on all sides. She was disgusting even to herself. Everything had to be paid for. Oh, honey, your suitcases are packed in the bedroom. Ready to move. I'll leave you the car for the first time. I'll give you the money, too. I'll take it from here. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, Brittany sang. She got up and walked with a ball gate into the bedroom. Before she left, she wrote a note and left it on the bed. Dear Jacob, I need to muster up the courage and wisdom to ask you to apologize for everything I've said. Done. What has so disappointed you? I am not worthy to be forgiven by you. But I know how generous you are. You have a big, kind heart that cannot remain indifferent to my requests for forgiveness. Are you sorry that you had to experience all these terrible emotions about me? It just sort of happened, and it's silly to make excuses. There was an act of betrayal, and there's no getting away from it. I'm truly sorry for what happened, and I hope one day to have your forgiveness, even though I know I'm a monster. I'm going to live in my apartment, and if you ever forgive me, just say the word, and I'll be at your feet again. Thank you for everything, and I'm sorry. Brittany picked up her suitcases, tossed her keys on the bed next to the farewell letter, and walked down to the car. A minute later, under the whistle of the wheels, she sprinted out the gates of the mansion, she knew she would never come back here again.